EA, close the special games. Stop. That's right. We have breaking news. You heard it here first from Mike. Uh, okay, so what happened is oh, we're actually on. <laughs> we're live. I was just trying to amuse you. But I might cut. Go. I might. I might cut that beginning part out. We'll see. It depends on how much I actually recorded of you. Um, if we got it all, we'll keep it all. So what happened is we, we recorded the podcast last night, and I still haven't posted him. I was going to do that, and then all this Star Wars stuff started happening. So, yeah. Mike, you wrote the news story. Why don't you tell everybody exactly what happened? So EA made this blog post, uh, kind of a surprisingly blunt and honest blog post. Very where, surprising. Yeah, where they, they said that the EA Visceral Games Star Wars project, the one that was the Amy Henning one, and from Visceral Games, people who did Dead Space. Um, they've been talking about this game for a while. They even showed a little bit of it off before. Um, they just said they straight up are completely like retooling the game, rebooting it, moving it away from Visceral Games, closing Visceral Games. And Amy Henning appears to not be involved uh, anymore. They, they, won't, they, they won't say exactly what's going on there. We'll get into that a little bit later. And the kind of surprising part is they basically they straight up say the reason this is happening is because and this is a quote in its current form it was shaping up to be a story-based linear adventure game throughout the development process we have been testing the game concept of players listening to the feedback about what and how they want to play and closely tracking fundamental shifts in the marketplace it's become clear that to deliver an experience that players will want to come back to and enjoy for a long time to come, we needed to pivot the design. So very like pretty much is coming out and saying this was shaping up to be like a single player narrative game that we couldn't really make money off of after we sold it. Right. And but we like have the, no we'd be able to that. we'd be able to sell like storyline DLC, but that shit Maybe. doesn't make money. Like, no, they, basically it wouldn't. And you know, they talk about. Fundamental shifts in the marketplace that very clearly means loot boxes, uh, Grand Theft Auto Online style games as service, stuff like that. Yeah. So there's a lot to unpack here. Um, I mean, the, the, the bottom line is that Visceral Star Wars game isn't coming out. Visceral Studios closed. Amy Hennig's future up in the air, as far as we know, still at EA. Um, let's let, let's actually start with Amy Hennig just to kind of get her out of the way because uh, that's one of maybe the the saddest parts of the story for me. Uh, yeah. She had a, a a somewhat calamitous and dramatic exit from Naughty Dog that no one still understands exactly what happened. Um, uh, and now it feels like she's having the rug pulled out from underneath her at EA. Like they right. literally just came and said, "Hey, we're taking your baby away because." It's not going to make enough money. Because the market doesn't seem to be up for it. Yeah, it just really seems unfortunate because she's clearly super talented. I want to play her games. Uh, like, at least the Naughty Dog thing worked out because the Charter 4 was still really good. Uh, again, we still don't know what happened there. It's still kind of confusing. Uh, and now, you know, this happened. I mean, she's been working on this game for a while. It's what she's been up to since she left Naughty Dog in 2014. Right. Yeah, it just yeah, it just feels like we haven't been able to hear from Amy Hennig in forever. And it, it's like not going to change anytime soon. We haven't been able to hear from her. She's not allowed to talk about these things. Right. And now it's like, she, you know, she like again, what, either, either she stays at EA and works on a new project, so we don't hear from her a while, or she leaves EA, has to sign another like non-disclosure agreement, right. and we still don't hear from her for a while. So she's just like trapped in this like video game void right now. And yeah, and it it seems kind of unfair to her just the way that it's working out. Like right, she's and, you know, hired to do this one thing, she was doing it. Maybe, <coughs> excuse me, maybe there were problems with the project, and that made it easier for EA to like pull the plug on it. Mm -hmm. But still, it, it it seems unfair. Right. I mean, it's just it's just so crazy. I mean, this game's been in development for a while. It had to be somewhat far along, right? Yeah. I mean, they were they were targeting late two thousand nineteen for this thing, so it still was a bit away. That, that that was like fiscal year nineteen, right? Like yeah. So yeah, it's so always a little confusing. It, it still could have ended up in like twenty eighteen. I think is how that works. Um, uh, well, yeah. well, they said launch late in fiscal year two thousand nineteen. Okay. So. All right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like, uh, it was still up in the air there, uh, about how that game was ever going to work out. We don't know. It's not going to work out at, at all at this point. Um, I think the other thing to unpack here is, um, I guess maybe just the fate of single player story driven games. Like, wh right, how, are we, how do we yeah. end up here? 
Yeah, it's, I don't know. Because, I mean, it's been a narrative for a bit, right? Like, that people, that single-player games don't make as much money. But people were still kind of making them. And they would, you know, be successful sometimes. And, but... and to be clear here, we're talking about the top stratosphere of this of this market. Sure. Triple the, A. The triple A blockbusters, yeah. Because, obviously, in indie, that stuff still was completely working there. In fact, it's much more feasible for them to do. But it's just, it's... Like I said, this stuff has been happening for a bit, but it's bizarre that we're at a point where an EA can just straight up say, yeah, this game was shaping up to be a story-based linear adventure game. The same way that other people would say, like, yeah, this game just wasn't really coming together. Like, right. they, they say it's a story-based linear adventure game, like, like it was an accident. Like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's turning into that. <laughs> <laughs> like, as if it's a calamity. Right, like, as if they're not in control, like, every step of the way. Like it's not the thing. Like, like it's an. It wasn't the reason they hired Amy Hittig in the first place to right. make one of those. Right. So it's like something that happened to EA and not something it did. Like, yeah, these. I mean, it was it was blunt, but it was still very corporate speaking away, and that that maybe that was one of the ways that like it rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, but it, like it feels like what happened is is back in the 1990s, someone plugged a, a phone cord into a computer, and now we're here. Like it doesn't it feel like that? Like like that right. like like we just start like at that point it was inevitable that we would get to a point where software would have to exist like in a very permanent way online and grow and that includes game software. Like right. Microsoft doesn't make like isn't going to make a new version of Windows anymore. They're just going to make Windows 10 and they're going to update it forever. And now all games have to be the same way. Like th these are service companies now. Uh, right. And it, it, it was just, inevitable once they went online. Uh, it yeah, just, but it's at the same time. It just, it's so weird. Like I just, I have a hard time comprehending it as someone who grew up alongside the industry. Right. And the two big shifts that they're talking about here are loot boxes, that Overwatch style thing that people are like right now having some trouble figuring out with how they're right. you know going to be in battle. For e EA teams, included. EA. EA included, right. EA yeah. included. And then the other one is Grand Theft Auto Online, which has turned Grand Theft Auto Five into. Was it the number two best-selling game last month or something like that? Yeah, something uh, like, ridiculous. like yeah, two or three, yeah. Right, so, yeah, like those two big things, right? And yeah, everybody and kind of wants to chase that a bit. And there, there are some other factors we can get into. Right, it, it, like let's not, uh, you know, like joke around here and say, oh, EA doesn't know what they're doing. Like, yeah, they're having trouble figuring out loot oh. boxes with Star Wars. But they are making uh, more money than they have in quite a while. Their, their stock price is higher than it has been in years. I think it's the, actually the highest it's ever been by quite a quite a margin and they point to service based games as the reason for that and FIFA Ultimate Team Madden Ultimate Team these are core to that uh, their mobile games are, are all all feature this business model um, so they know it works they're seeing the results and so when they say the thing like we are meeting the customers where they're at like they were they were listening to the, to their feedback i think part of that is yo know, our job is to see how you spend money on games and find way to sell you those things and you're buying loot boxes. Uh, you're, you're like, if we're, we sell you a full price single player game, you, some of you are going to buy that, but a lot of you are waiting for it to go on sale. A lot of you are buying it used or borrowing it or renting it or We're pirating, pirating it. it. Yeah, like there's a million options to like not have to pay that $60 to, to EA. So, like, they're like, we can make more from a smaller group if we just do the loot box thing. And that seems to be what you guys want. It seems to be what your, your spending habits are telling us to do. Uh, and that's kind of what it felt like they were writing in the, in the press release. Yeah, man. It's just, it's just like you, you get it from a financial point of view. You understand why it financially makes sense, but it is just, just depressing that. Yeah. Because I mean, I like these linear single player story based games. The idea that that model is pretty much kind of done. So at least for third party AAA right. development, right. Um, you know, we've seen, I've seen some arguments online, especially from uh, Daniel Ahmad about, you know, because people are pointing to things like... Uh, a lot of Sony like, stuff. Like a lot of Sony stuff or Nintendo stuff as like, you know, single player gaming isn't dead. Uh, there's two things there. One, which is this other point that those are, you must, almost all of them are also open world games. Yeah. And there's still, that's still a different thing and an easier thing to monetize than a linear game. The other thing is that it's easier for a Sony or Nintendo to make just this single player game that people are, uh, you know, can, can, can pick up once, uh, yeah. play through it, and that's okay, because it's at least getting them into their system ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. And then they're more likely to spend money on other things or pick up new games, and that money goes to them. For a third party, 
first off, that money that you get up front, part of that has to go to a Nintendo or Sega because of the licensing fees. And then, uh, and if you have a Star Wars license on top of that, yeah. you have Disney, like, like, like wanting to get its money, like you have to give Disney its cut, so you have to keep that in mind with every decision you make. It's got to make, make the maximum amount of money, or else it's not worth it to have this license you're paying a lot of money for. So, like, there's yeah, there's a lot of things there. They they, they don't have the same benefits of a first party, and I, I would expect Sony um, and, and uh, Nintendo to keep making single player product games with you know light microtransactions here and there, where like you know Zelda has DLC and stuff. Yeah, that's like the right. old model of games as a service, and that's going to keep changing uh, for everyone else. But Nintendo, like Nintendo, can release Mario Kart, and that Mario Kart game is going to sell through the the life of the Switch. Like they are only going to release that one Mario Kart game. It will always be sixty dollars, and it will always find an audience. So, uh, yeah, they're fine. It's it's everyone else that's trying to figure it out, and EA included there. Um, <clears throat> I'll say that. It does, like, EA has this reputation, and it's earned at this point for being the publisher that buys buys a studio and shuts it down a few, a few, years, a few years later. Uh, Visceral here, I think they might have always owned Visceral. I, I don't know, maybe not. Uh, Visceral might have started independently. Um, uh, Visceral, I think, was, it did have a name that was just EA something at some point, I think. I'll, I'll look into it now. But, you know, it's Bullfrog. It's, uh, there's a million other names that aren't going to occur to me right now, but this has happened over and over. Um uh, it feels like Bioware, if Bioware, like, maybe has a few more bad games. Like, it could happen, it could happen to Bioware. Um, like, well, you just never I, know. I look what Bioware is working on now, a, a super games as a service project. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, um, so, it, it's, I get why people are going to see this and say EA is clearly in the wrong here. They're, they, they are greedy and they just want to make money so they're shutting down this game that people want they're shutting down uh this studio of amy hittig who is this creator this artist and they're not gonna let her make this thing uh but it, it does feel like this is ea working backwards and i think that's probably half the reason they wrote the, the pr message the way they wrote it to say we can't justify the expense of this game um you know the, of a single player game anymore Unless we could find a way to put loot boxes in it, we couldn't do that with this one. Uh, so this game just can't exist. Um, and at a certain point, I, I wonder if people start to like look at like the way that they are spending on games and maybe try to change it. But it maybe it also feels like maybe that's just uh, that's too big of a thing. It's too big of an idea. People aren't going to look at it that way. They're just going to look at e- how EA is bad. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Again and again, I, I understand monetarily why it makes sense but it's just it is just depressing and they're still part of me like you, you couldn't make somehow find money to make this really good and excellent narrative driven star wars game while you still have your games as service star wars games right you still right. have whatever respawn's working on i'm sure it's gonna be some kind of a shooter thing you still have uh you know the battlefront it's not like there's not going to be a battlefront three in a couple of years right in, in the game so it's just you know man it's just because this is the second false start now for like an uncharted like star wars game because there was that uh what was that that it was like the name was a bunch of numbers but it was supposed to take place in, like the underworld of coruscant right remember that game they showed off like a big tech demo of it at e3 and it was a big mm-hmm. hit and then that one was canceled and now you know same thing with this one uh, it's like it's just not meant to be, or something. Yeah, uh, I, I'll say that it, I, as far as I understand it, the um, respawn Star Wars game is untouched. It's still going to happen, uh, but you get the feeling like, oh, that, yeah, probably because that's going to be a service-based game. They'll figure out a way to do that. Um, the, the new game is now going to be at EA Vancouver, I think, right? Um, yes. Yeah, I think that's right. <clears throat> I feel I feel like that studio is either new or they were previously working on the Garden Warfare games, uh, the Plants vs. Zombie games. Um, so it'll be see. interesting to see how they how they split that up. But like that that's a studio that might have some understanding about how to do loot boxes. So I, I think maybe that's why why they, why it goes there and why you just shut down Visceral. It just makes like yeah, it's like oh, it makes more sense. We're not going to teach this studio how to make this this type of game that actually makes us money. We'll just shut them down and go to this other studio we already have. So. <clears throat> It's a, it's it's shocking. It is kind of bold that EA just comes out and does this and pulls off the, and like rips off the band aid and just gets it over with. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I feel like the I feel like the industry doesn't really know how to get through this this path of, like this little microcosm we're in right now where 
they see a way to make a ton of money, like right over there, and they have an audience of really hardcore gamers that that will that do play those things, but it doesn't ever seem like the thing that they're the most passionate about with like you know, as a whole. Like you know, I mean, like a, as a wider gaming community, we don't ever hear how oh, I can't wait for the new FIFA for FIFA Ultimate Team. It has its its smaller uh, community mm-hmm. off to the side, and they just exist on their own, you know, in a silo. Um, maybe Overwatch is one of those ones that bridge the gap, but it's rare, it seems like. So it, you, just don't, you, just, you just don't feel passion. Right, for that's what I'm more. saying. And from, from, from both sides, from the people making them, right. from people buying them. Like, like, like the Shadow of War, I think, is a good example. It's a game that came out. Uh, it's got like an 80-something Metacritic. You know, some people seem to be enjoying it. There's a lot of criticism, it, but no one seems to love it, right? Right. Like, and maybe I mean, like, it's not a game that people are. Is it, is it a game people are going to talk about ten years? And and that's the thing. It's just all these games, these triple A kind of safe bet. They're, they're just beginning to feel the same. It's like they're making the same three games, and yeah. one of them is Assassin's Creed. And that's what I kind of feel like this game is going to turn into is probably something more of an Assassin's Creed model, with some kind of loot boxy thing. In yeah, it. man. These like multiplayer component. And they try to throw in a grand theft auto online similar thing there uh and uh, uh, (coughs) because to hear that they're going to try to make it a destiny right because that's the other one of the three games you can make now you can make Mm -hmm. a call of duty you can make a destiny or you can uh make a uh assassin's creed and and at a certain point if you're not the one like spearhead spearheading those you know flavors or those genres or whatever it often comes across that it feels like you're making a game to sell loot boxes uh, you people were always making games to make money. Like we we all understood that that made sense. Uh, but like when it's a product and you just buy it and you have it, uh, there's a, this dance. I think we were all used to where it's you know they put out the magazines, with, you know the, the screenshots in the magazines, and then they put it online and they have the videos and the commercials and the marketing, and they'd have to sort of woo us and convince us to be hyped for these things and buy them. Um, now it just seems like they're. They're putting out these games because like, okay, we know we're gonna finally like some audience, and it's all about getting the the like the two percent of players that have a ton of money and like loot boxes and like that the gambling aspect and like taking risks uh, and maybe getting something out of it and really hit hammering them, uh, where we are just like everyone else is just sort of this cloud in the background to make the game feel uh, like like it like and make make it feel real for the people that are spending the money on those microtransactions. Uh, while the rest of us are just like, hey, this, you know, this is just like everything else. It's fine. It's clearly made with a lot of craft, a lot of people that know what they're doing. Uh, but it's not wowing me in, in ways that games used to, uh, which I think, uh, w- why we get so excited for something like Super Mario Odyssey that looks like it's going to just blow our minds in every new way with all these different ideas. But, um, like those games are, are rare and I... I, I like. I hesitate to say this is like the publishers, um, like just doing this because like, they're just after money. It feels more like they're just so so afraid of risk. And I, I think the last thing I'll say about, about this is that we could see like maybe the risk is higher than it ever has been. Uh, games that come out and don't find that passion, like Agents of Mayhem. Like there've always been games like Agents of Mayhem, those middle right. tier B-, B class games that you know people, no one was really in, insane about. But I, I've been following the NPD charts for years now, and those kinds of games, several years back, would have always made at least the top 10 on the month they came out, no matter how busy the month was. In August, there was almost no competition, and Agents of Mayhem was 16 on the list. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, that, sort, that level of failure for a game these days is just not acceptable, and it's something we haven't seen before, and games that are or bigger than that, Prey and Dishonored 2 and um, uh, The Evil Within 2, all these games coming out, that they, they seem to be flopping as well. Um, that Publishers aren't going to be able to justify taking those risks. And I think that's where they're at. And that's why I think EA says, no, we have to stop this now or else we're going to pour a bunch of money into this and take a huge risk. And we could lose just so much that it's not even worth it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and it's just it's just weird work because it's again linear single player games at least in the AAA like we have indies picking up a lot of slack and just in diversity in general and that's that's really kind of the bummer here is that just all these games are 
really feeling the same. We have Andy's pick up that slack, but you know, the idea of these uncharted like experiences, except for literally Naughty Dog, it's, it's like we're not going to get a lot of those. Gonna, they're still going to be single player games, but they definitely are not, they're not going to be uh, on that level. It, it's weird that the idea of a story based linear game is kind of um, the monopoly of one studio of a Naughty Dog. Mm-hmm. Or maybe Nintendo, if they do something where even Nintendo games aren't necessarily like that. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's just, it's bizarre. It is. Um, I, do you get the sense that maybe we haven't heard the end of this this very specific story? Like, uh, if, even if it's just in regards to Amy Hennig or EA's entire relationship to the Star Wars brand. Um, do you feel no, like... because if, if there was dirt, I feel like they would have been less, uh, less clear about these kind of already sort of icky reasons. <laughs> At least icky in terms of, like, telling actual consumers about it, right? Being so blunt about it like normally they would just be like oh you know this game wasn't working or we're moving to the studio or uh what have you so right. the fact that they kind of told us what would be wrong unless they're really trying to throw us off the scent of some real ickier thing uh, i don't know i think they're they're being surprisingly honest about why yeah I mean, even if it's not uh, icky just like they like the fallout is still gonna like come like there's still more to come I don't know. I it, I just I don't know. Like what other like what what would be another game that would have not a necessarily fate? not necessarily maybe. another game, but just like uh, but like the like the way EA works with Disney. Like maybe there are problems there. Like maybe Disney is getting frustrated with something for some reason. I I, I don't know. Well, Disney like, has like just, problems with licensed games. Well, I mean, just like look at it this way. Look at it this way. Um, look at how Kathleen Kennedy has dealt with directors on the Star Wars movies. And what if what if they're what if they feel that way about EA? And the, but the way that this deal works, it's a little bit harder to be like, okay, getting rid of EA and we're bringing in this other director that we actually trust. Um, is there yeah, something? I, to I that? guess I haven't really thought about what Disney thinks about this. Hey, you're making a game for a couple of years. Why? Why is it in suddenly a thing? Why are people saying bad things about uh, about you guys on Twitter? Yeah. Uh, why are you getting voted the worst company in America again because of the, how you treated Star Wars games? I think but, Disney's probably more concerned about uh, you know. The, the revenues, and I think that EA is able to make a good argument yeah. with them about how this is going to make them X more dollars. That might be exactly right. I mean, who, like, who else is Disney going to go to? Uh, yeah. The only other option is, really, you know, you have the other big studios uh, or themselves, which every once in a while they do that, and that never really works out too well mm-hmm. for them, so... Yep. Um, oh, well, I, just a thought. Um, I, I think we could probably throw it back to... Uh, I think we're going to go to the break from here, so... Uh, I'll have to edit this into the podcast and post it up so everyone is listening now. Yeah, oh it's god, just, yeah, cool. it's just I don't know. It's like I was just I was violently upset by this at first, just because I don't know. I guess I guess it's like you have to appreciate bluntness, but it was just so it's just so hard to literally hear hear an EA say like, yeah, we just really don't want to. Even though this game was like halfway done, we like just don't even want to release something like this anymore. It takes away the hope, right? It takes away like yeah. this this sort of veneer we've put on everything where we're like well yeah that maybe that's going to come in the future but it's not here now and ea came out and said it is here now we are making decisions about what games we make and don't make based on these factors and and that is going to cause right now it's going to cause games to get canceled that you want that you're excited about that we thought we could make and no we can't we're admitting right now we can't make this game and make money uh we have to go this other route that that everyone else is kind of you know, crying about. It's uh, yeah. It's I mean, kind of a very clear like picture that. of what EA games are going to look like for the next few years. That's for sure. That's right. I think you're right. Um, okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, th- you know, podcast was a little bit late because of this, but I'm glad we were able to get this in there. So thanks everybody. Uh, and back to the normal show. <laughs>